So The Fablemans is written and directed by Steven Spielberg and explores a young boy who is obsessed with filmmaking and basically his journey from first picking up a camera to finally deciding to make a film and making many films after that. So going into this movie, you know, seeing the trailer, I just thought this was about a kid who loved filmmaking and whose family don't really believe in this idea and the young boy struggled to come to grips with what he really wants to do with his life. And going into this, I had no fucking idea that this is actually Steven Spielberg's real story. I saw this with a good friend of mine, and after we left the theater, I got a message from him saying, bro, this movie is actually Steven Spielberg's true story. He's gone about this in a really discreet way. He didn't call it the Spielbergs. He called it the Fablemans, and no marketing gave it away to me that this was about him. And whether every single aspect of the film was true or turned up a notch, you know, to suit the film better, it changed my entire perspective on this film and how I viewed it. There were certain scenes that I think didn't need to be there and were just so poor to the story. Like there's a scene where the whole family's camping and the mother starts doing this weird fucking dance and it was so uncomfortable and dumb but finding out that this actually happened now it's not dumb so again now knowing that it's a true story it's kind of hard to critique the film in this way like there is one scene in here that is so fucking funny he meets this girl in high school and she's a big believer in Jesus and he's talking to him, you know, in a sexual way like saying come back to my room and you'll find Jesus like he's gonna bust all kinds of nuts or something <coughs> and it'll be that good that he believes in Jesus but he gets there and there's like a big, you know, statue of Jesus hanging over her bed there's photos of Jesus everywhere and she's literally got him there to pray and if that actually happened to Spielberg as a kid <laughs> I'm just trying to put myself in his shoes, it'd be so funny. So scenes like that, I don't know if that actually happened in that way, with that sort of setting, but for the movie it worked really well. So no surprise, the work behind the camera was absolutely masterful. The movie was beautifully shot and some of the scenes were just so well planned out. The acting from everybody was absolutely fantastic. And it's so refreshing to see Paul Dano in a role that is not a fucking creepy, serial killer, Riddler action. He actually was on screen just giving a pure acting performance and he was absolutely amazing. He was the star of this movie. In some ways, his performance being so good was kind of unfortunate, taking away from the main character in this movie, the kid. His performance was amazing, but Paul Dano was just on another level here. Seth Rogen literally plays himself like he does in every movie. Leave me alone, okay? Okay? So the runtime for this movie was about two hours and 40 minutes. And one of the main problems I have, it was, I'd say 30 minutes too long, in my opinion. The problem within this problem is that although Paul Dano was absolutely amazing, we were following the journey of young Steven, and that's literally all I cared about in the film. I just wanted to see his journey, and his journey only. So when there'd be scenes of him, you know, shooting film with his friends, and it would go back to their household, where it's just the mother, the father, and the sisters, I didn't really care, I just wanted to keep exploring this kid's journey. The mother and father in the movie are given a lot of attention, but his sisters in the film, they're sort of just there. I mean, they're in a few pivotal and important scenes, but you don't really care. You sort of just want to keep following this kid's journey and that's it. And again, I know now that Spielberg's trying to tell his story how he wants to, which is fair enough, but as an actual movie, it just didn't work for me in that aspect. But that's a small nitpick. This movie is seriously good. If you're not a fan of dramas and slow storytelling, you're not going to enjoy this. But if you appreciate masterful filmmaking and amazing performances, I'd definitely recommend it.
So this is another great movie to kick off 2023. I'd definitely be keen to see this again. I don't know, maybe I'd change my mind on that extra 30 minutes that I want to cut out. But as someone who wants to be a filmmaker, this movie was super inspiring. And I resonated with it a lot. So it was a really good film to watch. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. So thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.